Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBCrochet.com and today I want to show you how to make the easy beginner waffle stitch cowl. And this also includes learning how to add some simple fringe to the bottom of the cowl should you want to do that. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you in just a minute the materials that you're going to need for this. But as part of knowing how to make this, all you're going to need to do is you're going to know how, need to know how to do the chain, how to do the single crochet, and how to do a double crochet. And I will show you all the rest. Okay. For this project, I'm recommending one scan of Premier Yarns Parfait. I promise you we're not going to use all of this, so you can maybe save the rest of it for another project. And I'm also recommending a size L or 11 or 8.00 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, I suggest that you have a yarn needle available as well as a pair of scissors. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's some more information on the yarns that I'm going to be using in case you can't find the Premier Yarns in your area. This is a bulky weight yarn. It's 100% polyester and there are 525 meters or 574 yards and I promise you like I said before we are not going to use all of these and this particular color is called hot pink of course you can use whichever color you like. To start we're going to make our slip knot and we're going to make 72 chains. So go ahead and do that. Now that I've crocheted the 72 chains, we're going to join these together. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to be very careful to make sure that our chain is not twisted as we join. And we do this just by going evenly. I'm just making sure that the front side of this chain is facing me. Okay, so the front side is facing. And then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first chain that we started with. It's not the slip knot, but the first actual chain. This is kind of the trickiest part. Once we get through this, it'll be easy. And we're gonna do a slip stitch, pull it through. Now I am going to chain one, and I'm actually going to use that same space again, and I'm going to work a single crochet in that first place where we joined. And I'm going to single crochet in each chain all the way around. I'm just going to work in one side of the chain. And also I'm going to be, be hiding my loose strand for the first few stitches as I go. So this is going to be just a foundation kind of a row. I'm sorry, a round. And, and for those of you who are you know, pretty new beginners, um, if you crochet in a circle, we call those rounds and if you're just going across and then chaining and then turning your work we call those rows and sometimes I can get them a little confused when I'm speaking to you but hopefully you'll understand what I mean. We're actually going to be doing rounds and that we're literally going to be crocheting in the round on these so I'm going to go ahead and clip this since I don't like the way that's standing out there. So I'll go ahead and clip that and that way that is gone and that stitch or, or thread rather is hidden in my work forever, I hope. So go ahead and work 72, I believe is what I said, 72 single crochets all the way around. Okay, after going around the entire circle, we wanna make sure that all the single crochets are facing upward in the right direction and that the the circle is not twisted in any way. Now if it did get twisted a little bit, that's okay. Make sure that it's straight now before you make this next join because this is kind of important. Then we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. Now we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to skip this first, actually the first stitch, this chain three is going to count as our double crochet. And let's go ahead and chain one more. That's one chain to represent the space that's going to be in between these two stitches. So we're going to um, skip the next stitch and then we're going to double crochet 
using, you know, going through both loops like you normally would in the next stitch like this. So we're going to start making like these waffle holes as we go around. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to do that all the way around. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, and then double crochet in that next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch. I'll do that again. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch. And let's, let's take a look at what we should have. We should be forming these holes just like this. So go ahead and work that all the way around. You should have, um, let's see, 72 divided by 2 would be 36. So you should have 36 of these and the chain 3 does count as one of the 36 stitches. After we've worked this all the way around, we're going to join in the 1 to the 3rd chain with a slip stitch and you should have they should have come out evenly all the way around. And you can see what I have. And we're actually going to repeat row 2 until we get the length or, or the, the depth of the cowl. So we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then chain one more for that extra chain. We're going to skip the chain and we're going to just work a double crochet in the double crochet. Chain one, skip the chain one space, double crochet in the double crochet. We're going to do that all the way around. Chain one, skip the chain space, and double crochet in that double crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way around. And I'll give you a look at what this should be coming out to be. Round three ends the same way as we ended round two by working a slip stitch in the one, two, three, the third chain. Go ahead and work a slip stitch there. And then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we're going to repeat row three again and actually do four chains, one for that chain one space. Skip that chain one space and double crochet in that double crochet chain one skip the chain one space double crochet in the double crochet chain one etc and go ahead and do this until the cowl reaches um, the thickness that you want i'm actually going to do this four more times so this is row four i'm going to do um, i'm sorry round see i get confused round four five six seven and eight so i'm going to do this four more times this is one of the rows and then i'll show you what i have okay this is what you should have after working eight rounds okay i've gone ahead and tried this on and i like what i'm getting but i think what i want is i want more layering so i'm going to go ahead and work another six to seven rounds um, so let me go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what I have. After completing the 14th round, I'm going to go ahead and end this. I'm going to give it a chain and give it a little tug. And then I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut a nice long strand so that I can hide that in just a few minutes. And I want to show you the width of the cowl. And this is what I have. Now we're going to learn how to make fringe. Now before we get started with the fringe, I'm going to have you thread this into the yarn needle, this little loose end where we just fastened off, and like this. And I'm going to run it down into some of my stitches 
It should be pretty easy to hide this with um, all the soft bulky texture that's here. But make sure you, you go ahead and, and run it into these stitches and, and try to hide this as best as you can. Um, because with this slippery kind of yarn, if you're using what I have, um, it'd be real easy for this thing to pull out. Okay, so I've run that down about three inches. That, that's actually pretty good. I'm going to take my scissors and very carefully cut. Okay. So now that that stitch is hidden, you want to hide that before you begin the fringe. Now we're ready to begin the fringe. And just to show you, we're going to attach it around the bottom of the cowl. Remember, the, the top of the cowl is the part where we have the, the row of single crochet. So we're going to attach the um, little tassels right down here. You can attach them in every other hole, or we can attach them in every hole, depending on how much fringe you like. Okay, now we're ready to begin the fringe. You can just continue using the same crochet hook that you have. Um, I would recommend a book or a piece of cardboard. And let me say, tell you how long to make it. Um, my, my book is approximately six inches. Um, that equates to about uh, 15 centimeters. Um, that should be plenty um, long for the fringe. Now, if you want longer fringe, just pick um, a bigger piece of cardboard, a sturdy board, or even a book that's you know not so important. And we're not going to hurt the book, but you do want to be careful that you don't choose your favorite one. And um, it's something that we're going to wrap around, and I'll show you that in a second. And you're going to need a sharp pair of scissors. Try to find a pair of scissors that actually cuts through the fabric um, without hesitation, because you don't want to gnaw the yarn. It, it will not leave clean edges if you don't have a sharp pair. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to try to determine how much we're going to need. So let's say we have 72 um, stitches. Um, I believe there are 36 open spaces all the way around here. So you can either choose to do 36 tassels, or you can choose to do half as many, putting them in every other um, hole, which I'm going to show you. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm only going to make 18 tassels. Now we need to decide how many strands are we going to have per tassel. Um, I'm going to go for uh, three and see how that looks. And depending on the yarn that you choose, you may choose to do more or do fewer. Okay, let's go ahead and get some yarn. As you can see, I have plenty of yarn left from this scan for probably at least a couple other projects, definitely two more of the cows. So this is how you make how you make the fringe. We're going to hold this gently here and we're just going to wrap it around. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do a lot of this. I'm just going to wrap it. I'm not pulling it real tight, but I am pulling it um, so that there's no slack. Okay, I can do this as much as I need. I'm going to just stop right there since I'm just demonstrating right now. Now I'm going to very carefully cut right here. Okay. I could probably use a sharper pair of scissors, but that's what I have for now. And now I'm going to take these strands. These are the strands that we're going to use for the tassels or for the fringe. So I said I was going to try three. So let's um, let's see how three looks. I'm going to take three of these. I'm going to try to put the ends together. You see that? Trying to even them up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, um, the fringe does not have to be perfect, but you don't want it to be too too off. Um, okay, so now after we do that, I'm going to line the ends up as best I can, right down here. You can see that again. It's not perfect, and that's okay. And then I have the center right up here where my finger's holding it. Now this is the fun part. We bring. 
the cowl down here, we stick the hook from under to the front. I have the front side facing, um, and that would be the side um, where I, I like the, the front side of the um, stitch showing. Put it over the hook, pull it through like this. I'm going to put all of the threads on the front of the hook, and then I'm going to pull it through like this. Then I'm going to give it a tug, and I have begun my fringe. Okay, now I'm going to skip the next, the next chain one space, which is right here, and I'm going to put the next tassel in the next space. I think doing every other space is going to be fine, but like I said, if you wanted to put it in every space around, that's absolutely fine. So now I take my yarn, try to even up the ends as best as I can. Remember we're skipping this this one here and we're going to go to the next chain one space, stick my hook up there, all three strands over, pull it through, all of the six strands at this point over and pull it through and give it a little tug and now we have two. So I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around. Let me let me just go ahead and show you one more, especially if you're a beginner and you've never done fringe before. Um, so I line these up and you can see the static electricity developing here. It's still a little, little chilly out, um, definitely dry. Okay, so now I'm going to skip the next space and then coming into the next chain one space, put the hook up in there three strands over, pull it through, yarn over, and pull through all three, and then give it a tug. So this is how my fringe is developing. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this all the way around, and then I'll show you what I have at the end. Okay, now I've finished attaching all my fringe. I wanted to show you what this looks like. And we are done. We are all ready to wear our waffle stitch cow. Okay, we were all done with our easy beginner waffle stitch cow. I hope you liked this project. If you did, please give a little subscribe button a click so that you don't miss any more of my projects coming your way. God bless. Bye-bye.